Good morning comrades, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the Nürburgring at Apex and today we will be telling you how you can prepare your car for the Nürburgring because last year I was fortunate enough to drive many many cars and quite some of them had many many issues that could have been easily prevented. Failing brakes, low tire pressures, overheating, you name it. You've seen it all and if not feel free to watch some of them. Now today we will be using our Apex's new red Golf, we call it Red Golf because we also have a Black Golf, very convenient. Maybe we should come up with a better name. But the car that has been just freshly built by George. Welcome. Certainly. How was your holiday? Mm, mm, wasn't a holiday, but the UK visit was interesting. We'll leave it there. <laughs> okay, we'll talk about it in another time maybe. But yeah, so we have here our Red Golf 7, which has been fully built over the last couple of weeks, last months by George, you will talk through the mods. By the way, obviously, of course, you can also rent this car for the track and be quick because the reason why we built it is because the previous Black Golf was like booked out all the time. So check out our website for the pricing, etc., etc. And obviously also when we will be driving this car later on the track. But for now, let's get started. So where do people start with? Um, well, where do people start with where they go wrong or where do people should they start with? Hmm, good question. I mean, Let's say the most dangerous stuff that I have experienced were failing brakes. So maybe let's address those quickly. What are the things that people should do when it comes to preparing the car for the track when it comes to the brakes? I mean, first things first, obviously, your pads are your weak spot. So most OEM pads, that's just, that's just literally, for this video, we'll just use the Golf as a reference through everything. Mm -hmm. So the OEM stock pads um, for the Golf, give it two or three laps, and there's... Most of the, the material was transferred to the disc, which gives you vibration. And so not vibes, can't, bad yeah, vibes. It's bad vibes. It's bad vibrations. Um, <laughs> and you don't, you basically it just can't cope with the heat. The compound can't cope with the heat. So they end up breaking away. And obviously that's not good. End up with yeah. brake fade, too much heat, whatever. Um, so your normal first port of call would be, would be pads. We now swear by the MA45B compound from Endless. We're yet to test a couple this season, but Hands down, been the best so far on, on all the braking systems on the cars. So this, it's really good. Lasts that is very your, long as well. Yeah, and exactly. Offers great braking performance. Um, again, on the Golf, you have a couple of weak spots. Now, de depending on what brake system you run on which car, but this weak spot is one of the sliders in the carrier. So when we change the pads on the car the first time, we then change the slider as well. One has a rubber insert and a recess, and this allows too much movement in the caliper and the pad wears wedge shape. So that's, that's a little upgrade that some cars don't have the issue, some cars do. That's a little upgrade that's worth doing at the same time as pad change. Um, discs, now a lot of people have a different opinion on discs, but I've been running, well we've been running the, the Techstar Pro disc, which is a motor spares disc, mm -hmm. and have had no issues whatsoever. Mm -hmm. They don't crack, they don't break away, there's no issues, I've uh, literally been no problems. So disc is really your choice. If you want to go with something that's a little bit more spicy with some drilled and grooved, maybe just some grooved discs. Drilled discs, not normally, is my cup of tea. The BMW ones are great, but the aftermarket's normally mm -hmm. not that good. Um, but yeah, the disc is kind of a, a gray area. But what's very important is the brake fluid. Yeah, then. exactly. So then that this then- This is what results. What a lot of people think is that you're gonna get brake fading due to failing brake pads or failing brake discs. But most important and a simple component is actually brake fluid or oil in this case. Exactly, yeah. The brake fluid is obviously key. Um, again, there's loads of different ones on the market, but we've used Endless and found that that's been very good, so we use that. Um, and then obviously in, the same, in that same bracket, you have brake cooling. Mm -hmm. So we've got brake cooling for, this is from an Audi RS3, so OEM parts, so it doesn't need to have, because mm -hmm. it's already approved. And this literally just cable ties onto the wishbone and directs air onto the brake disc. And to be honest, yes, we have noticed a big difference with it. Um, in terms of pad life, brake life? Yeah, exactly. On, in terms of disc life and pad life, it does just divert a bit of air necessary into the, into the braking system and gives, us, gives you a nice little bit, mm -hmm. bit of cooling, which is good. Um, much needed on the Golf Series with the ESP system being so aggressive. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's your, that's your main starting point with brakes for sure. And also when it comes to changing brake fluid, we have here a steel ah, yes. brake line. Yes, of this is something that you still need to replace for, uh, for this car actually. 
So all the cars, most of the cars come originally with the rubber lines and when you press your brake pedal, the fluid is pressing the pistons and then brake pads against the brake discs. And if it gets too hot, uh, it starts boiling and your pedal gets soft and then things, unfortunately things can happen, yes. Uh, so to prevent that, you will change, as mentioned, for the braking fluid with higher boiling point and in addition that your rubber lines will not expand you have the like the steel flex lines and they're actually not expensive they're around 80 euros i think for the yeah, set yeah normally between eight, between 80 and 150 yeah yeah Anywhere depends between. on the car depends on the length etc and they already come with the tuv or the abe approval so you can just put them in papers so it's so good and obviously these can't crack like rubber lines yeah rubber lines always crack now so. important thing what we're talking about here is for example the golf gti and for example there we have a bmw m3 m4 yada 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 and the big misconsensus misconception is by people saying like hold on a second those are performance cars advertised by manufacturers as performance cars breaking breaking the never cream lap records aren't they good from factory no simple as they want to save costs this means they know that 99.5 percent of the owners will never take it on track so why should you put a over expensive components that's why all these things you unfortunately for a heavy track usage you really need to change all right anyway moving on from the brakes Maybe we can talk about actually this because it's also kind of related to the brakes. Yeah, the I, would say, conversion. I would say along with the brakes as well, if you, it's all well and good putting really good brakes on, but then if you run a not very good tire, then you're kind of defeating the object. Mm -hmm. It's also plays in, in part. So the next point is obviously wheels and tires, tires mainly. Um, just run a good tire that can deal with, with, with the driving style, deal with wherever you're going. Take like, care of your tire pressure yeah, as well, exactly. Of tire pressures are a huge part. It's going to be a very long topic that we should cover in a separate video. Yeah, exactly. So that aside, um, obviously then we go with a, a lighter wheel, rotational speeds. Again, that can go into that in another video because that's another, exactly. another thing. Uh, wheel studs. Wheel studs are now will fit every car with wheel studs because it's with the heat generated and the pressures on there, we've found that bolts either snap or bolts come loose over time and it's not good. So everything gets studs and nuts now. and we, it's, it's Exactly, especially with upgraded systems. And uh, as mentioned, if uh, a driver, doesn't matter whether it's our customer or you as an inexperienced driver, nothing wrong with being experienced, but if you drive constantly with ESP or traction control on, the car will constantly brake for you and therefore generate more heat and then your wheels can come loose. It's something we actually experienced at one of the very last laps of last year where Tesla Model 3, no, sorry, Model Y uh, had the wheels actually come off due to the heat almost. Well, luckily we made it off the track in time. Anyway, that's when it comes to the absolute important basics, I guess. Yeah, that's two, that's two of the, the absolute important, important basics, but um, also suspension yeah. is, I would say it is a basic factor that you should definitely, if, even if you're a, a regular, if you're a regular track goer or if you're not, if you're just a casual track goer, mm -hmm. you need to choose your level of suspension which you're going to go for. But it is key that you get something with a slightly stiffer spring rates to suit where you're going, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. So again, it's a very different topic uh, that we'll, uh, we'll definitely explain in one of the upcoming videos uh, in a very long length. But for this video, I haven't seen a stock suspension fail so far, luckily. We'll have a full season. So uh, stock suspension usually is actually designed to cope with thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of kilometers until they might start leaking, but actually breaking shocks or struts I haven't seen. So in terms of safety, for handling, yes, good. Safety, of course, to, to be faster and more stable through the corners, but- um, Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. The, main, the main thing is, is to, to keep, a, something adjustable is always good because if you can put dial a little bit more camber in the front axle, mm -hmm. rear axle, it deals with the corner speeds a little bit better, you have less tire wear, etc. But it depends on, on what you want the car for. For example, my Golf is on H&R shocks and springs. Yeah. And yeah. you've seen videos before exactly. on the channel and it's, it works, it's fine. It works. And it's a daily, so yeah. I don't need anything more. Yeah. But whereas this is more track focused, this has got the three-way adjustable with different spring rates, mm -hmm. the suit and different, different damper design. It's, it's just how, depends on which level you're, you're yeah. taking it to. But. Okay, well, next question. Did we do a stage 22 and three quarters remap on this car? 100% no. <laughs> if you need power, then you're lacking. <laughs> yeah. The thing is because, again, one of the other most common issues that we've seen, especially last year when it was extremely hot, is that the cars will be simply overheating. 
And quite often, because they put some map on it, sometimes it's good. The worst maps are actually some tuning boxes that you put in because it does not rewrite the ECU. It just says, like, yeah, you can fully send it, and then it does not cope with the cooling system. Therefore, actually, since we are running stock power because it's more than enough, we don't need to upgrade cooling whatsoever. Only on a race car, I think we put the oil cooler and that's pretty much it. Yeah, on the, on the Cooper, there's an oil cooler. These, these two little TFSIs are a little bit, pr little bit prone for running a little bit hot. Mm -hmm. So we'll run a slightly different oil grade, which we've yet to change. Um, and it's the reason why there's no Lick and Molly sticker yet, because it hasn't earned it yet with this oil change. <laughs> so, um, so we'll wait until we've got that in. But we run a slightly different oil. It brings the oil temperature down a little bit, but if it starts to get too high, the Black Golf has been fine. Yeah. Um, but if it does start to come a bit higher than oil coolers and stuff, are, you start looking into. But it's not normally necessary for most cars. For most cars, unless you run a remap. Unless you're but running If you're doing power, a remap, yeah. please, guys, not only upgrade your brakes up to spec and suspension, but also your cooling system, because if your car gets overheated and you dump coolant or oil on track, there's going to be lots of issues, not only because you might crash yourself, but if other people crash behind you because of you, you will be charged for that as well, unless you're running some track day where it's own risk policy. But anyway, cooling, also very important. Um, yeah, and oil change as mentioned. I think that's pretty much it when it comes to absolute yeah, necessities. Yeah, that, that's, that's absolute basics mm -hmm. for sure, yeah. Um, now, of course, here we use top of the line products when it comes to like really high quality and we're not gonna lie, they're very expensive. Endless brake pads are the most expensive pads on the market probably. But if you would have to make a guess, how much money people can spend like to be reasonable, affordable for all like uh, uh, brakes, tires, uh, um, I mean, can you have to do it within thousand euros, five hundred euros? For the basics, I, I would say so. Yeah, I mean, you could run stuff like uh, Pagid RSL 29s. We've run them on the cars before. We've run slow. There's so many different pads out there that that are not that are better than stock mm -hmm. and are not a real kick in the teeth of price. Yeah. Um, obviously, if you still want to, if you can't, if you're try, trying to do it on a budget then you're not going to be able to go with a set of wheels as well because yeah. they're expensive. Unless you can buy some good wheels used, mm -hmm. it's fine. Um, tires, I mean, NS2Rs are, are such a good price. Mm -hmm. And I mean, for a rental car, for sure, they'll just run on this and run and run and run and there won't be any issues. Mm -hmm. um, depending on your driving style, if you've got stock suspension and you're a, bit, a little bit aggressive, then you're going to wear tires down quickly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it really depends on your driving, but you can get tires pretty cheap. I mean. Yeah. What's the set of NS2? I don't know the prices anymore, to be honest. But there, there must be uh, under 100. Yeah, years, I mean, you, you're, pro years you're probably looking at a 225-4018, for instance, is probably around, I don't know, I'm trying to figure out the uh, complete guess, around 120 per piece. Yeah, yeah. So 120 a corner, plus pad square, set of 80 euro brake lines. You'd probably be looking at 1,000 to 1,500 euro of current yeah. prices, I would say. But then to have will, something reliable. Yeah, reliable that will keep you going for yeah, exactly. 100 plus laps exactly. without any issues. Obviously, if you want to throw a bit more on suspension, again, depending on the car you run, we're running the JRZ three-way on this, but you could get a JRZ one-way. Yeah. You could just get the normal rebound adjustable only and just work with, work with what you've got there. Mm -hmm. um, KW as well. KW have the, the single way adjustable ST by mm -hmm. KW. Again, they've just brought another one out that's even, that's even cheaper than, than a Club Sport V2. Mm -hmm. It's the same, but yeah, it depends. It depends, depends. how much you want to go, but. So long story short, I mean, the main message is probably, of course it's okay you've seen that to do one lap in stock conditions, sometimes depending on the car an easy two laps, but if you're thinking of tracking the car more often, if you're saying like, hey, I'm gonna come for a whole weekend of TF for the Nürburgring, and we're planning on doing more than just one single lap with your daily, please come with preparations, otherwise issues will follow and it's gonna be a very expensive mistake because it's either 1500 euros for things that will keep you going for hundreds of laps or 2,000 plus euros for the barriers, your car, other cars maybe. You call the three car pile up, which is all yeah. GT3 RSs, then yeah. you're looking at a big bill. Exactly, so uh, just like these basics, get them covered. Well, by now this video might turn into a very long one. So of course we could cover all the extra additional such as seats and cage, etc. But I think maybe it's something for another video to talk Let's more. Do a part into. two. Exactly, we can do a part two about the advanced mods, so to say. So for now, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something from it because of course we make this video pretty much every year, but in comparison to last year, we had 150 or something thousand new subscribers. So I'm sure a lot of new people who want to 
find out what's what or hopefully need the education will use some of that information and if you don't want to build your car yourself or you don't have to or whatever reason obviously as mentioned you can come and drive one of our cars so looking forward to seeing you here at the Nürburgring stay safe and see you then thanks again George no and then on to the next one we'll maybe talk about the E46 or something when it comes to building an advanced track tool it's going off for the cage build now right tomorrow yeah, yeah nice yeah. Only just managed to finish the chassis work today. Well, I say finish the chassis work, finish some yeah. of it, but cool. Yeah, tight, tight schedule. Yes.